Hi friends, my name is Laura and welcome to Book Bubbler. Today I have my August book haul for you. Now I am happy to say that it is so much more reasonable compared to my July book haul. That was a little uh, much, let's say. <laughs> so I think I have about a dozen books here, which I know is still 12 books, but compared to the 50 or 60 or whatever that was that I held last time, this is nothing. So let's jump right in. Um, I'll try and tell you as much about these as I can. Of course, I haven't read them, but you know, we'll see. All right, first up, uh, I was given this by Danny at Spinelli Speaks. I'm looking through you Growing Up Haunted, a memoir by Jennifer Finney Boylan. Um, so it's about her childhood growing up in a haunted house in Pennsylvania in the 1970s. And it's not only about that. Um, Jennifer was also born James. So uh, Jennifer, Jenny herself, born James, lived in a haunted body and both, both her mysterious, diffident father and her wild, unpredictable sister would soon become ghosts to Jenny as well. So she talks about what it means to be haunted internally, externally, um, family dynamics. This sounds super interesting. So yeah, this sounds really good. Thanks, Danny. Next up, uh, this is from Paperback Swap. I, it was recommended, I think, by Shannon at That Sopo. This is Ravishing the Heiress by Sherry Thomas. I think it's the Start True trilogy. I am unsure, but it's part of a trilogy. Um, and Millicent um, has an arranged marriage to an impoverished Earl. Uh, their agreement is that um, it's just a friendly marriage. Uh, and that since she is so young when they're marrying that they're going to wait eight years until they consummate the marriage and then it will only be for procreation. So she, they, they both agree to this. Um, they meet and she falls in love with her husband. She's not supposed to, but she does. And he is in love with his childhood sweetheart. So there's sort of a triangle, I think. I'm not sure, but it sounds like I, I mean... I think I know how it's gonna turn out, but I, it sounds really interesting. Something that's a little more unusual. I don't read a ton of romance, but I usually have at least one or two on the go and I'm fairly new to the genre. So yeah, this sounds good. And I like that it's not massive either. It's like 300 pages or something. So there we go. There's that. Um, next up, I have a couple that I got from thrift books because they were inexpensive and they have been on my wish list for a long time. I was getting, here, I'll just show you. I was looking for a copy of this book, um, Pilot's Choice by Sharon Lee and Steve Miller. This was one of my recommendations from August from um, Heidi at My Reading Life. And I was trying to find a reasonable priced copy of this. And I did. This was, I think, $6 for something that's out of print. That's not bad. This little flag, by the way, is um, where the books are split. This is a two book compilation. So I found this there. Um, I am into this. I'm getting used to the language and the science fiction world and everything, uh, but I'm, I'm working on it, I'm chomping away at it. So I got that there. And then I also found a first edition, which I was not expecting at all, of Queen Lear by Molly Keane. Molly Keane is an Irish author. She was mostly writing, I think, in the 40s and 50s, maybe 60s and then um, stopped for a while, and then this came out in 1982 or four. Um, 81, wait. Her genius was rediscovered in 1981 when she appeared in print as a novelist with good behavior. Uh, she has been called an infernally good writer for her M.J. Farrell novels. That's where she's written before, written in the 20s and 30s. Um, this was finished in 1988 when she was well into her 80s. So it's about uh, a young lady, Neandra, eight-year-old Neandra, named after a horse, lives with her parents, Sir Dermot and Lady Forster and her aunt, Mrs. Fox Collier, Aunt Tossie at Deer Forest, an Irish country mansion, and loves to love and be loved. So she has this lovely childhood sort of on her own, romping around this beautiful house, making friends with the servants, doing all these wonderful things. And then um, this dandy catches her eye. She marries, and she marries him. So she's, it's sort of snarky against the upper classes, I think, um, a bit of a takedown. And I think Neandra 
is finding some hard things out in life now that she's married to this dandy. So it just sounds like a mid-century author that I would really like, even though I know this was published in my lifetime, doesn't matter. Um, it just sounds good. And for like under four bucks, yes, please. This one was also under four bucks. This is a recommendation from Jen Campbell, not personally, but it's been on my list for a long time to try and find. This is In the House Upon the Dirt Between the Lake and the Woods by Matt Bell. So unfortunately, it's an ex-library copy and the back is a little weird, but it's something about um, this newlywed couple, they're trying to get pregnant. The pregnancy fails and the husband becomes baby obsessed. And so something about where they live in this house um, when the wife sings, she's got this beautiful voice. When she sings, the things she sings about come true. So um, there is a big sentient bear that rules the beasts of the woods. There's a second moon that's doing some weird stuff. So it's very fairy tale esque sounding, but also creepy and dark and twisted too. It just sounds really interesting. So very happy to find all those for an affordable price. Then my book of the month club this month, um, Not a Happy Family by Sherry Lapina. Um, there's a very rich older couple. They have grown adult children and they are murdered one day. And all the kids, I think, start fighting about who's going to get what, who, like who killed their parents, I think is not the most prudent thing, <laughs> which of course makes them all very suspicious in the cop's eyes. But yeah, this sounds like just a good standalone thriller. I've never read Sherry Lapina. I've heard good and bad things, um, but this was the only one that sounded really appealing to me last month, so we'll see. And then book number 16 in the Three Pines Inspector Gamache series, All the Devils Are Here by Louise Penny. I friggin' love this series so much. I'm really stringing out the books because I don't want... I don't want there to ever be a day when I don't have a new one to look forward to. I think I am, hold on, one, two, three, four, five, and then number the sixth one that I'm behind on now just came out in August. So I'm six books behind, but that's okay with me. Um, I have to pick up a copy of that one yet, but this is the 16th book. I don't know what's happening now. I just know that I adore this series. Her writing just seems to get better and better. I love Gamache. I love Three Pines and everyone in it. I need to get back to it. And it's starting to call me more. And usually once it starts to talk to me, then I'll read one or two or three in a blitz. And then I make myself stop again. Like, oh no, you might not have any left. So <laughs> slow down. So um, I have this one now, number 16. This is going to go right to my mom. She has been um, champing at the bit to read the next one. So I'll get this one and then you'll probably see me haul the new one uh, next month's haul as well. But looking forward to this whenever I get to it. And then uh, when I was at Barnes & Noble, they had a sale. I shouldn't have gone. That's where I got um, the Louise Penny. But I just happened to see this corner here on a clearance stand, a half off stand when I was standing in line and I was like, yeah, I'll take that. So this was a complete impulse buy. <laughs> I didn't know it existed, but it's The Narrow Boat Summer by Anne Youngson. So I think one of, it's about three ladies, uh, charming novel, novel, I can speak, of second chances about three women, one dog, and the narrow boat that brings them together. Um, so Eve leaves her 30-year career to become a free spirit. Sally is leaving her indifferent husband and two grown children, and Anastasia, a defiantly independent narrowboat dweller who is suddenly landlocked and vulnerable. So Anastasia, her dog, and these two ladies all spend a summer landlocked on this little narrowboat, and they find things out about each other, etc. I'm sure it will be charming and lovely. Just the cover seems really appealing to me. That's why I bought it, so we'll see. Didn't need to get that one, but... Oops, I did. Um, I don't know how I heard about this book at first, but it sounds darn good to me. It's The Eyes of the Queen by Oliver Clements, the start to a series, the start to the Agents of the Crown series. The second one, I think, just came out or is coming out soon. I'm not sure which. This was out last year or the year before. Uh, ba -ba 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 -ba. A man will join Her Majesty's Secret Service to protect England and Queen Elizabeth I from a nefarious plan to crush the Age of Enlightenment. So, she's trying, um, uh, 
tent situation, Her Majesty's Secret Service is born with the charismatic John D. D E E in its ranks. A scholar, soldier, and an alchemist, D is loyal only to the truth and to his queen, and for her, the woman he is forbidden from loving, he is prepared to risk his life. A visceral and heart-pumping historical thriller, perfect for fans of Ken Follett and Dan Brown. So, Danny, you might like this, and um, Scott and Nell, I'm assuming you would not like this. <laughs> Um, but this sounds really intriguing. I like historical fiction and I like this time period too. So there's that one. Just a few more to go. Um, this was another buy for my recommendations from friends here. This is The Island by Peter Benchley. Uh, this is a rec from Timmy at Lost Cunningham, whose channel seems to not exist anymore, which is sad. I liked him and his channel. Um, but this is just a standalone adventure thriller. I think it's about a man and his kid maybe. I don't know, but they're fishing uh, near this certain island and something happens and they end up getting stranded on this island and they realize once they're there, I think that there's some kind of a lore about every year or every three years, there's some kind of repetition to this that people on, a, on boats go missing or something horrible happens to them when they're by this island and the dad realizes, oh shoot, I think that's us right now. So we'll see. I don't know. It should be interesting. I've never read Peter Benchley before. I've never read Jaws or anything else he's written. Um, and I am curious to see how this is going to work out. There's also a movie with Michael Caine from probably the 70s or something that um, he made an adaptation. So if I can find that, I'd like to watch that as well just to see Michael Caine doing something like this. So there's that. And then these last two are from the dollar store. So this... I didn't know it was a thing that existed. Star Touched Stories by Roshani Chokshi. Uh, she wrote The Gilded Wolves. And this is YA short stories. Um, I think some of them are attached to the Gilded World, Gilded Wolves, excuse me, universe. And some are attached to maybe other books she's written. I, I don't know. But I recognized the author and I had never heard of this before. So for a buck, I just grabbed it. If it's terrible, I'll let it go. And this last one I have already read. <laughs> but I think I need a copy. So again, for a dollar, what the heck? This is Competence. This is the third book in the Custard Protocol series by Gail Carriger. Carriger? Carriger? Not sure. Um, I really liked this whole series. I really like Gail's writing and all the worlds that she builds. So I am happy to have this. And if it turns out that this is the only one that I own for whatever reason, I'll probably just release this back into the universe because I... I don't need to keep every series that I read, no matter how much I liked them and how much I may want to. We'll see. Anyway, so one I've actually read. So that's it for me this month. That's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve books. Not bad at all. I will take that. Um, I think because I've been uh, checking off some of the books I already own, I'm only actually up one book this month, maybe two from when I started this month. So that's not bad either. I'll take that as well. Um, all right. I hope you guys are all um, doing well, reading something wonderful. And let me know if you have read any of these, what you think of them, if they're terrible. I hope they're not, but maybe they are. Well, I'll find out eventually. And yeah, I'll talk to you guys very soon.